Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here. In this video, we are going to talk about Mac OS Big Sur install problems. I've compiled a list of all the running known issues for you to take a look at and decide whether you want to make the jump right now in 11.0.1. Maybe you looked at those and you say, okay, I'm fine with that. I, I've got a backup. I'm going to try it out. Or maybe you see there's a serious enough issue that affects the machine that you have that you might want to wait until 11.0.2. Let's jump in and Let's get quickly started. go over a couple of the main issues that I wanted to show you guys that I've been able to uncover after doing some research and talking to different users about how their upgrade process went. I've got this article here and I, the whole point of it is to show you all of the issues that I've already found. And let's go over the first one real quick. The Big Sur installer app download problems. Now you, you've noticed that I've already had a video out talking about that where the initial release happened on Thursday and Apple had to pull the download and everybody was complaining about all kinds of download issues. Apple has fixed that but there's still users that are reporting the same problems. So I do go over that in this area a little bit and I link to the article talking about what you can do if you're still having that issue. So that's issue number one. But the good news is for a majority of users, this is already resolved. Let's jump into number two. Big Sur progress bar gets stuck mid installation with a black screen with Apple logo or stopped progress bar. What users have said is that they've started the install, everything went good so far, but what happens is 40% through the installation process or the boot, it gets stuck right here at this mark and it will never move again. What do you do if this happens to you? So I've got a couple things here. First, I say wait, right? When you see the progress bar, you, usually it's just loading and it should not take that long, but we're doing an upgrade here, so just wait. Now, if you come back and this thing's been on there for like an hour or two hours, it's probably not going anywhere and it's gonna be stuck. So what I say is, is at this point, there's really nothing you can do. The, you, you can't log in, you can't do anything. You have to power down the Mac. The good news is, is that everybody that's did a power down in the situation they've actually been able to get the machine to power back up and boot right into Big Sur. So this is not as a serious issue as some of the other issues I'm going to go over, but it's still something that's going to throw a lot of people off. They're going to be wondering what the heck's wrong. Is this thing bad? Is it corrupted? What happened? If you get this and you reboot and it still happens, then it could be a third party application. And I've got a little party here talking about that. I recommend you booting up in safe mode. And what that does is that disables third party applications, kernel extensions, launch daemons, all those pieces so it just loads the basic operating system with just your files if you get into the os after doing that it's one of those applications or a launch statement or a kernel extension that is blocking you from boot and then you got to do some additional troubleshooting maybe removing some of those apps and then keep test you got to go one by one or just do a fresh install and then put everything back you can decide what you want to do at that point let's jump into the third one this is a little bit more serious for some a small amount of users affected but their 13 inch MacBook Pro users from 2013 to 2014 are reporting, and again, not all, just some, are reporting that this upgrade is bricking their machines. Now, keep in mind, when I say bricked, I mean, this machine is literally unresponsive to anything and it's unusable. What they've reported is they've installed the update and then it reboots and it's sitting at a black screen. When I say black screen, I'm not talking about the machines off. You can still see the black backlight on. So it's like a little bit of a brightness in the background. And, and those machines still have the Apple logo. So you can see that the, uh, on the LCD screen, so you can see that the machine is powered on and they can't do anything. And what they've tried, obviously they've tried all the normal troubleshooting procedures, like holding down sh option, doing a PRAM, SMC, holding a command R to get to recovery. Nothing works. They power it off. They power it back on same black screen but the, the LCD is still on and it won't respond to anything. Now, what do you think happened here? There's no one knows for sure yet, but it's possible that there was a firmware update on this. I, on the, and I'm going to have to dig in and, and find out because you guys know I do that. I, I'll dig into the update and I'll see it. Every, obviously, every machine got a firmware update. But it's possible that maybe the machines from this era, there was something wrong and they're causing this problem. But again, not for everybody. Just because you have a 13 or 14 doesn't mean it's going to affect you. But this should make you hesitate for a second to say, you know what? I'm going to hold off until we know a better picture of the story. There, I've also seen one or two reports of a 2015 12-inch MacBook having the same issue. So again, I recommend holding off for just a little bit if you have one of these affected machines. Now, what? Now, if you're watching this and you had this happen to you, what are you going to do? Not, there's not too many options. Like I said, none of the startup commands work or anything like that. You you can just wait until a new fix come in, but obviously there's not really anything out there right now because there's nothing you can do with your Mac. It doesn't respond to any startup commands. Wait for a service program to cover the issue. Now, this is tough because usually it takes a long time. You, you're not gonna sit there and wait for Apple to, like months later to come out with a service program for this. You need to use your Mac now. 
Number three, bring your Mac into service. Now, I need to say something here, and, and I posted this right here. In my opinion, this is 100% Apple's fault. This is not your fault. This is not hardware just randomly failing after you know six or seven years that's not covered under warranty. Your machine was running 100% fine until you installed an Apple-created update or upgrade, and now it's literally dead. They need to be able to cover this. This is on them. Any other manufacturer will do this. And I've had this before. I've been in the IT industry for over 20 years and I've had many vendors that if they like firmware update or, or any kind of an update that they make and they put out and it literally renders your product useless, that's a problem on them. Again, it's not like you spilled water on it. It's not like your hardware randomly failed because your computer is getting old. It was working 100% fine. You install the update and now it's dead. So try to escalate. Do not pay $500 or $1,000 or whatever they're going to try to charge you for a logic board repair. Hopefully we can get they can take care of this for you and get it fixed. Now, I did mention one weird like little thing that might work. I don't recommend you trying it, but like if you're like at your wit's end and you like, it's up to you. This is, I'm giving you a fair share warning. One user has mentioned that they have a, a, a 2014 MacBook Pro and they tried this part and they mentioned that the IO board, the input output on the left hand side that has all the ports on it, they took off the back cover, disconnected that board and the machine powered up properly. Now, again, this could be this one guy's thing. There was a couple other people that said that they were gonna try it. So that's why I say disclaimer, don't, maybe let's wait until we get some more information. It worked for him. He, his machine powered back up, he booted in the OS, he plugged, the, got a new board and it was fine. Keep in mind, I don't think, I'm not so sure like the firmware touches that input output board. It could, but it doesn't make any, I don't know if it makes total sense that a firmware update would touch anything on the input output board. But I wanted to give you that guys that anyway, just in case you were, you wanted to give it a shot. I've got all these links to the different uh, forms and, and threads talking about this issue. The next one is Big Sur is stuck in an endless boot loop. Now, some users have reported that they've installed Big Sur and all of a sudden they can't even get it in the operating system. It just keeps boot looping. Either it's kernel panicking or it's just stuck in a boot loop. What do you do? My recommendation again is to boot into safe mode. It could be the same thing as I mentioned before that one of those kernel extensions, launch daemons, any of those things are preventing your system from starting up. And if you use safe mode and it gets you into the system and stops the boot loop, that's your problem. You got to go in and find out which third party application is causing the issue. And number two, pretty much straight up do a fresh install. And again, if you're having this serious issues and you can get in there and get your backup or you already have a backup, maybe it would be a good idea to just do a fresh install uh, before you continue. Now, the last one is that, and I don't have that here. I, I need to update it again. But there has been some brand new reports of slowness right as soon as you finish the upgrade. So you get into Big Sur, you made it, everything worked, but the entire system is slow. So the same kind of thing here. I would wait a little bit. Sometimes Spotlight takes the time to, it, to index the database of all the new applications. So give it some time. Just let it sit. If you open up Activity Monitor, you'll see MDS, and that's that's Spotlight indexing your drive. Give it some time to let that finish, but like let's say after a day or so, it's still super slow. You know what? In that case, maybe again, it's better to do a fresh install. Like if the entire system is running slow, maybe just do a backup and do a fresh install. Why do I say this? Because I've got multiple systems running Big Sur, and I have no slowness at all. At all. So it, it, only the reports of upgrades are causing this. I hope this this is a quick overview of 1101. That's why I'm saying this version because this video might be out there and you come back to it when after a couple updates have come out. Um, this this video is for 1101 issues. And if there's any updates to any of these issues, I'm gonna give you guys another video. The next two videos, I'm gonna go a deeper dive into the individual issues. We'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.